From January 16, 2024, publishers and developers using Google AdSense, Ad Manager or AdMob will be required to use a consent management platform that has been certified by Google and has integrated the IAB's Transparency and Consent Framework when serving ads to the users in the European Economic Area or the UK. So, what this all means for us developers, how it affects our ad revenue, how to avoid our ads getting suspended. Stay tuned to get an answer on all these questions, because this will be a complete guide and at the end I will teach you how to properly implement a new consent flow in your Android app to confirm the new policy in the European Economic Area and the UK. First, let's define for what countries exactly this policy is referring to. They say countries that belong to the European Economic Area, or short EEA, and the UK. So here is the full list of those countries, by the way. So we have Austria, Belgium, Bulgaria, Croatia, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, Latvia, Liechtenstein, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, but also the Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway, which are not part of the EU, but EEA instead. Ok, so now that we know exactly from which country users we need to get a consent from, now let's define uh, what is this uh, IAB's uh, transparency and consent framework anyway. Well, that's easy. Let's ask a chat GPT. They say that's uh, a set of standards and guidelines which are designed to help companies in the digital uh, advertising ecosystem comply with the General Data Protection Regulation or GDPR and the e-privacy directive. So, a GDPR which was uh, implemented in May uh, 2018 introduced some uh, strict rules regarding the processing of a personal data including uh, how it is collected and uh, used for uh, online advertising purposes. There are four key features of this framework – transparency, consent, standardization and the compliance. The second one is the most important for us developers. This means that we need to explicitly allow users to choose whether they want to either provide us a consent or deny it. If they deny it, it would result in ads not showing in our application or at least show only a limited amount of ads which would then result in a low revenue that we can earn from ads. With this new policy, users now have the option to basically disable ads in our application. Now, we come to the question, how can we manage those user consents in our application? Should we do that on our own? Well, no. We can use Google User Messaging Platform SDK or UMP SDK in our application to handle this scenario. I will show you in practice uh, everything that you need to do to implement this uh, system successfully. But you do need to remember that this uh, SDK lacks uh, some features, which is why some of the logic uh, would have to be handled uh, on our own. Luckily, there is a guy on GitHub who made a repository with a couple of uh, Kotlin files that uh, should make our life a lot easier when implementing this uh, consent stuff in our application. So, the first step before we dive into the code is to enable and create a GDPR message for the European regulations. Open up the Google AdMob dashboard and select Privacy and Messaging option from the sidebar. After that, you need to create a European regulations consent message. I have already made one and successfully published it. So, these are my settings here. You can check that and compare it with yours. Now, after you select this message, then you will be able to modify uh, some properties of the consent dialog itself. From the right side panel, you can update those options, but I have left uh, everything to be a default. There is an option here to stylize the dialog itself, and also when to show this dialog as well. I have chose to show it only for the people who are coming from those uh, countries where this regulation exists. On the left side, if you select the Manage options, you will be able to check out and see what your user is gonna see when they run your application. 
there are quite a few options that are available for users to toggle on and off. Users can choose how their data is being processed. And we have another option, Add Partners. Here you can find a large list of vendors that use the user data. You can scroll through this list and enable or disable vendors at your choice. In my case, I have left uh, everything to be a default and I'm not gonna change anything right now. After you are done uh, updating your uh, message consent, click Publish Changes button and you're good to go. Great! Now, after we have successfully created this consent message, uh, now open up the official documentation about uh, UMP or a User Messaging Platform SDK so that we can copy a dependency into the project. All useful links will be down in the video description, so don't worry. And don't forget to like this video if you appreciate the information I'm sharing. This will help me to provide more quality content. Ok, so here we can see a function that needs to be called on an app launch, which is called Request Consent Info Update. This function determines whether your users need to provide consent if they haven't done so already, or if their consent has expired. By the way, a consent lasts for a one year, and after it expires, you need to request it once again. Here, down below, you can see that we are passing a context and a consent request parameters object, along with a success and a failure listener. After you receive the most up-to-date consent status, you should call load and show consent form if required function on the consent form class to load a consent form. If the consent status is required, and it is required only if you belong to those countries, then the SDK will load a form and immediately present to your users. If the users doesn't belong to the EU country, then this consent dialog will not be shown at all. This callback is called after the form is dismissed. If consent is not required, the callback is called immediately. Next, we come to the part where we need to display an ad. So before requesting an ad in your application, you need to check if you have obtained a consent from the user using can request ads function. Now, with this we come to one logical issue that was confusing to me at first. So this can request ads function returns a boolean value, right? So if it returns true, it doesn't mean that uh, the user has actually accepted the consent, which uh, I thought at first. No. Instead, it returns true if the user has seen the UMP dialog, independent of uh, what consent the user gave or if the user does not need to see the dialog in the first place. But don't worry, I will show you a way around to check whether a user has actually gave and accepted the consent and not just seen it. So basically, after all of that, after the user has seen the consent, only then you can initialize the add mob SDK and load the add. And now we come to one more important question. What happens if we implement a consent and the users do not consent? Well, in that case, a limited ads applies in accordance with the EU user consent policy. So, the initial offering in a limited ads is just a waterfall mediation, meaning no ads are returned from the AdMob network. To better understand the concept of uh, ads, there are actually three different types of ads. So we have a personalized, non-personalized, and a limited. A personalized ads are those that uh, make inference about the user's interest based on the sites they visit or the apps they use. So Google considers ads to be personalized when they are based on the previous collected or uh, historical data to determine or influence ad selection. Then we have a non-personalized ads, which are uh, ads that are not uh, based on the user's past behavior, and, according to the EU user consent policy, a non-personalized ads are still require a consent for cookies and mobile identifiers. And finally, we have limited ads, which are ads in the absence of a consent for cookies and mobile identifiers. Limited ads do not access cookies, user identifiers, or equivalent local storage on the user's device. 
Oh, and one more thing, you do need to implement an option in your application that will allow users to manually provide a consent at any time. But don't worry, I'm gonna guide you through this uh, whole process of uh, add consent implementation in Android application. So uh, before I show you how to implement this into a real project, uh, there is just uh, one more important section of this documentation that uh, you should check out. And that is the testing this uh, consent behavior on uh, devices that uh, do not belong to the before mentioned countries from the EEU. So if you are not from one of those countries, this dialog will not show up. Which is why, for testing purposes only, we need to set up the environment properly. To obtain this uh, test device ID, you would need to run your application once and then check the logs. From the logs, you would then copy that device test ID and then you would paste that uh, ID into this uh, add test device hashed ID function. Also, I have mentioned earlier about uh, a few workarounds that uh, are gonna come in handy. And here is the GitHub repository that contains the logic which is not available in the official Google UMP SDK. Like for example, in the official library, we cannot tell whether a user has actually accepted a consent for a personalized, non-personalized ads, or if the user has declined the consent. We only receive a boolean value of a true if the user has seen the consent dialog. And that's all. I will not go too much deep into the explanation of uh, how those uh, workarounds uh, actually work, uh, you can read more about it here on this repository. But basically, those uh, workarounds uh, are taking the advantage of a uh, public uh, share preferences values that the official Google UMP SDK library provides. And based on those values, we can come to a certain conclusions. In this example here, I will use the first workaround to detect for uh, what kind of uh, ads the user has consent to. Whether that's for a personalized, non-personalized, limited, or all ads. I will implement the logic in my application so that the user can use the main feature of my application only if it gave the full consent to view the ads. For the demonstration purposes, I will use my own application that I have published on a Play Store. When the user tries to access the main feature of my application through the floating action button, I will check if the user has gave a full consent and only if that's true, I will allow it to proceed. Otherwise, I will point the user to the settings screen to manually trigger that consent dialog again and allow or give a full consent. A full consent can be provided by pressing the consent button, or if the user opens up the manage options window, then accept all button. So as simple as that. Alright, now let's open up the project. Here in the Gradle build file, be sure that you already have a dependency for a Google UMP SDK and the Google Ads as well. I have created here a uh, mobile ads consent manager class that uh, holds all the functionality that uh, we are going to need. First, we are initializing a consent information object. Then, we have a rather simple interface that uh, should invoke on a consent gathering. Then, we have a can request the ads property that returns true if the user has seen the consent dialog itself but we will use a workaround later to get the proper information for this matter. After that, we have a uh, is privacy option required property that returns true if the user belongs to one of those uh, EEU countries, and this is useful to determine whether the consent dialog should be shown or not. Next, we have a gather consent function that uh, takes an activity parameter as well as the interface callback from above. That callback should trigger on a both success and error, and we should pass an optional error to it as well. I'm also constructing a, a debug settings object that I'm passing to the consent required parameters. And this step should only be used while testing, and not in a production. Here you can see that uh, I have already pasted the ID of my device, and to obtain this ID, we are gonna comment out this uh, add test device hashed ID function and run the application. In the logs, you will find that uh, ID that you should now copy and paste to that uh, same function.
perfect. And finally, below, we have a one helper function that should display a consent dialog. And of course, a companion object that basically defines a singleton pattern of our class. Ok, so for now you have been introduced with this class. We can now proceed to the main activity, where I should trigger this consent logic whenever a user starts the application. I have created here two functions in the main activity. The first one should display the consent dialog on the application launch if the user belongs to one of those uh, EEU countries and if the user hasn't been provided with this consent dialog before. Here you can also see that we are initializing a mobile ads only if the user has seen the consent dialog, independent on whether the consent for ads is approved or denied. Next in this file I have one function that I have added from that workaround repository for checking what kind of a consent the user has gave. So this detect add configuration function returns an enum object that returns one of those entries that you can use to define a custom logic for your app afterwards. I will not explain this function too much except the part where you need to define and provide a custom string value. This is a vendor configuration string which is unique. And it's updated based on your vendor configuration on your AdMob dashboard. So this string should be updated whenever you update your vendor configuration on an AdMob. This is really important to note. Also, to obtain this vendor configuration string, there is one more helper function that you can use to execute and receive that information. In my case, I have already done that, which is why I am not going to repeat this step. But you should. Anyhow, let's proceed next. So in the home screen, where I have a floating action button that should start the main feature of my application, I wanna insert a check to see if the user has a full consent. And only if that's true, then I want to allow it to proceed. Otherwise, I'm displaying an alert dialog informing the user to open up the settings screen and manually trigger a consent dialog to provide the full consent. In my case, I'm also checking if the user doesn't belong to one of those uh, EEU countries and in that case, instead of using a consent dialog, I'm just saving a simple boolean value that uh, indicates that the user has enabled this uh, add consent option from the settings. Now, in the settings screen, I'm also using those two properties. And in the settings view for this checked state, I'm providing one of the two values depending on whether a user belongs to one of those EEU countries and whether this consent dialog is required or not. And that's it, as simple as that. Now, I will run this application for the first time with a test device ID. And as you can see, we are prompted for the consent immediately. I will decline it for now. Now, let's proceed to the home screen. Here, if I try to click the button, we are gonna see an alert dialog informing us that we should manually accept the consent from the settings screen. And only after that, we can proceed next. After we do that, after we go to the settings screen and accept that consent, then we can go back and we are gonna be allowed to access that logic behind the floating action button. Perfect. Now, I know that uh, we developers are annoyed uh, whenever a new policy is released. That usually means that we do need to uh, provide some kind of a migration for our users. But that's just how it is, right? So we need to comply to those uh, policies and respect the platform on which we are working on. I hope that uh, this tutorial will help other developers because I've spent days uh, figuring out uh, all those information that I have just shared with you all. And if you think that I have missed something, don't forget to leave a comment down below. If you appreciate the video, leave a like because it helps a lot. Other than that, leave your honest opinion and share your thoughts. Thank you for watching.